This is chapter 6, Dhyana Yoga, text number 7. Jitatmana Prasantasya Jitatmana Prasantasya Paramatma Samahitaha Satoshna Sukha Dukeshu Satamana Pamana Jitatmana Prasantasya Paramatma Samahita Paramatma Samahita Toshna Sukha Dukeshu Dhamana Pamana Yo Jitatmana Prashantasya Paramatma Samahita Toshna Sukha Dukeshu Dhamana Pamana Yo Jitatmanaha Prasantasya Paramatma Samahitaha Vitosna Sukadukkeshu Tatamana Pamanayo Jitatmana Prasantasya Paramatmana Samahitaha Vitosna Sukadukkeshu Tatamana Pamanayo Jitamana Prasadasya Jitamana Prasadasya Paramatma Samadhitaha Paramatma Samadhitaha Shitoshna Sukha Dukkesho Shitoshna Sukha Dukkesho Tatamana Pamanayo Tatamana Pamanayo Jitamana Prasadasya Jitamana Prasadasya Paramatma Samahita Sitoshna Sukhadukkeshu Tatamana Pamanayo Jitatmana Prashantasya Jitatmana Prashantasya Paramatma Samahita Paramatma Samahita Shri-Rosna-Sukha-Dukkeshu <laughs> Jitatmana Bhaprasantasya Jitatmana Bhaprasantasya Paramatma Samahitaha Paramatma Samahitaha Sitoshma Sukha Dukkeshu Sitoshma Sukha Dukkeshu Tathamana Pamanaha Tathamana Pamanayo Jitatmana Bhaprasantasya Jitatmana Bhaprasantasya by such control over the mind. Parama-atma, the super-soul. 
Samahita, Samahila, approach completely, approach completely. Siddha, Siddha, in cold, in cold. Ushna, Ushna, heat, heat. Sukha, Sukha, happiness, happiness. Dukeshu, Dukeshu, distress, distress. Tata, Tata, also, also. Mana, Mana, in honor, in honor. Apamana yo, Apamana yo. Honor. Translation. Translation. For one who has conquered the mind, the super soul is already reached, for he has attained tranquility. To such a man, happiness and distress, heat and cold, honor and dishonor are all the same. Perform by Srila Prabhupada. Actually, every living entity is, in, is intended to abide by the dictation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is seated in everyone's heart as Paramatma. When the mind is misled by the external illusory energy, one becomes entangled in material activities. Therefore, as soon as one's mind is controlled through one of the yoga systems, one should be considered to have already reached the destination. One has to abide by superior dictation. When one's mind is fixed on the superior nature, he has no alternative but to follow the dictation of the Supreme. The mind must admit some superior dictation and follow it. The effect of controlling the mind is that one automatically follows the dictation of the Paramatma or Super Soul. Because this transcendental position is at once achieved by one who is in Krishna consciousness, the devotee of the Lord is unaffected by the dualities of material existence, namely distress and happiness, cold and heat, etc. This state is practical samadhi or absorption in the Supreme. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyanam Janam Salaya Chakshulam Nidam Yenam Prasima Shivore Nidam Shri Jayatam Yama Nukhishtam Sahitam Yenam Bhutare Swayam Rupatatam Yenam Dharati Shavatam Nidam Bandeyam Shri Guru Shri Dharatam Shri Guru Shri <laughs>
Translation again, for one who has conquered the mind, the super soul is already reached. For he has attained tranquility. To such a man, happiness and distress, heat and cold, honor and dishonor are all the same. So in the practice of yoga, it is very important for us to conquer over the mind. The mind, Lord Krishna has just explained in this chapter, the mind can be the friend, but the mind can also be the enemy. We can elevate our mind by the mind, and we can degrade ourselves by the mind. So it's very important for us that we have conquered the mind. Because the mind can bewilder us. Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur describes the nature of the mind. He said, the mind is like a thief who runs away from a crime and he shouts, there goes the thief, there goes the thief. He is the thief himself, but he's saying, there goes the thief. So people, no one thinks, oh, he's the thief. The attention is on other people. So mind is like that. It doesn't want to admit that the problems are within us. We see faults in others. That nature is there in conditioned souls. We like to see faults in other people. We don't see our own faults. We see problems with others. We don't see our own problems. It's very important for us, therefore, to train the mind not to be critical of others, but to be critical of ourselves. It's important for us also to give up being selfish. We tend to be very selfish. We think only what I want, what I need. The nature of the mind is like that, to put so many demands onto us. I need this. We want to become selfless rather than selfish. We want to become selfless. That means we, we're not thinking about our own self, but rather we think about trying to do good for others and helping others, caring for others. That mood is very important for us. We have to practice controlling the mind. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna is going to go on to describe this yoga process. And of course, Arjuna is going to tell Lord Krishna that, you know, I can't do this. My mind is more restless than the wind. It's very difficult for me to conquer over my mind. But Lord Krishna, while he's sympathetic, he does not agree. He said, Asamshaya Mahabaho Mano Durnigraham Chalam Abhya Sena Tukhontiya Vairagyena Chakriya. Lord Krishna is saying, it is undoubtedly difficult to control the mind. But, Lord Krishna said, it is possible by constant practice and detachment, abhyas, practice. We have to practice. We say, practice makes perfect. We don't learn anything without practice. You want to be a good cook, you have to practice. You want to be good in the computer, use your computer, you have to practice. You drive the car, you practice. So many things we have to practice. If we want to control the mind, it also requires practice. And also, vairagya, detachment. We have to be willing to let go. That is a diff very difficult thing. Often people want to make, they make a show of spiritual practice, but at the same time they hold on 
to so many material desires, so many material goals and ambitions. They're not thinking of letting go. Rather, they want to hold on. This is the problem. How to let go? It, uh, it's based on our own desire. And desire comes from the mind. There are different phases of desire. Thinking, feeling and willing. We think about something, we want something, we're thinking about it, and then feeling, we develop a stronger desire for something. The attachment becomes stronger. And when it comes to the willing stage, then you're going to do it. Whether it's right or wrong, good or bad, because you want it so badly, you're going to do it. You're going to go ahead and try. So that is the nature of the mind, desires. We have to conquer the mind. And how to conquer the mind? We have to understand that we have a, a subtle body. The subtle body is made up of the mind and the intelligence and the ego. So higher than the mind is the intelligence. Intelligence is what we use to control our desires. Desires come, we have so many wild desires. The intelligence will help us to create these desires. The desire is, I want to have a lot of money. So the mind said, well, there's a lot of money in the bank. We'll go and rob the bank. But the intelligence says, well, that's not a very good thing to do. You get in a lot of trouble for doing that. And the intelligence checks the desire. So like that, we need to have higher intelligence to control the mind. And that intelligence, while it's higher in the subtle body, it's seated beside the soul. There, and within the body, there are two souls. There is the living entity, and the Paramatma. So here, Lord Krishna is describing that when we have conquered the mind, then the Super Soul is already reached. We reach the Super Soul once we have conquered that mind. How do we conquer that mind? We have to train the mind by practice, by use of good intelligence. Where do we get the intelligence from? You have to chant the holy name. You have to hear from Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita. You have to hear the scriptures. If we are making us a regular practice to hear the scriptures, then it will help us to cultivate good intelligence in the Bhagavad Gita and in the scriptures we get good knowledge to understand our spiritual nature and to understand what are the proper activities in the human form of life. It requires some education. That education is not what you get in the mundane material world. That education you're only going to get with the help of scriptures. You have to hear the scriptures. And even people may say, well, I'm reading Bhagavad Gita. But they're hearing it from the wrong person. Because there are many people speaking on scriptures. And they're not all authorized. You have to hear from the proper source. In other words, there's a channel for the distribution of spiritual knowledge. We have to hear through the parampara. There's a line of disciplined succession, a line of spiritual teachers who come, who explain to us the knowledge of the scriptures. We have to hear from them. So we say, actually there are 
three authorities to guide us, to help us, to control the mind. We cannot just simply depend on the mind to tell us what to do. Oh, my mind says like this. Oh, but your, our mind is always bewildered. Our mind falls in illusion. Because of the mind, we make mistakes. We have imperfect senses. Sometimes we will even cheat. These are all, these are all due to the mind. Our mind can be the biggest rascal. We have to train the mind. And we have to know when is the mind speaking and when is the super soul speaking. Sometimes we think, oh Krishna's in my heart, Krishna's telling me. Just like some people say, Krishna told me I can smoke and drink. Krishna told me I can eat fish. Krishna told me I can take drugs. They're thinking all these things. Of course, what is happening, the mind is talking. We're hearing the mind. But we're not able to distinguish when is, it, when, when is the mind talking and when is the super soul talking. We have to be very cautious to discriminate between these. It requires training. We have to hear in the association of devotees. And this helps us to come to the higher platform. As it says here, one who has conquered the mind, he has attained tranquility, peacefulness, tranquility. We want to be peaceful, we want that tranquility. We have to conquer over we have to conquer over the mind. <coughs> and that once we have conquered the mind, then we can come to this position where we're no longer disturbed by happiness or distress, heat, cold. The dualities are all the same. Because he has conquered the mind, he's detached from the physical body. The physical body experiences these things. But we learn in Krishna consciousness that we are not the body, that we are all spirit souls. So the spirit soul is not affected by these things, but the body is. And we are living in the body. And if we don't control our mind, then it will be very easy for us to also be affected by these dualities, by the pain and the pleasure, the heat and the cold. Everything is coming upon us due to the material energy, the modes of nature. We are under these modes of nature and we are subjected to all the problems of life which come about due to the material body. So Lord Krishna wants Arjuna to conquer the mind. He wants all of us to conquer the mind. The, all the different yoga systems are there to train us to control the mind and the senses. So. Controlling the senses, of course, we have to control the tongue. That is very important. First of all, if the tongue is not controlled, then how can we expect to control the mind? We have to understand the nature of the material body. We have senses. The senses demand so much attention. It's very difficult for us to control all the senses. It's very difficult for us to come to that transcendental platform when we're living in the material body. But it's possible with the help of the Super Soul. 
Krishna in the heart as the super soul directs us what are the proper activities. We have to follow the direction coming from the super soul. But how to distinguish when it's a mind and when it's a super soul? That's when we need shastras. That's when you need also association with devotees. We say sadhus. And we need also spiritual teachers, gurus to guide us, to help us to understand what is the proper activity. What should we do and what do we not do? So Bhagavad Gita describes there are two natures. There is the divine nature and there is the demoniac nature. Those who have the divine nature, they will take direction from the sadhu, shastra and guru. But those who are demoniac, they will listen to their own mind and they will act independently. They don't want to hear from any authority. They are thinking, I myself know. You don't have to tell me. I know everything. And that is the nature of the Asura, Jarasandha, Aranyakashipu, these kind of people. They don't like to hear from others. They say, I know, you don't have to tell me these things. But they're hearing from their own mind and their mind is telling them, you don't have to read Shastra, we know everything. But actually Shastra are given to us by the grace of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna himself will quote Shastra. You can read in the 13th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna is telling Arjuna that he is guided also by Shastra. He said it's explained in the Vedanta, in the scriptures. And he's also understood these things by hearing from so many great sages. Lord Krishna also had a guru. He went to his guru's ashram and he studied, right? Lord Krishna's guru, Sandipani Muni. Sandipani Muni's ashram is in Avantipur. Avantipur, today it's called Ujjain, but initially, the previous it was called Avantipur. And if you go there to the temple where the ashram used to be, they have put the six, 64 different arts which Lord Krishna learned from his guru. Lord Krishna stayed there 64 days to learn 64 different arts from his guru. So, Lord Krishna, he is the Supreme Lord, he knows everything. He doesn't need to learn anything, but he shows an example for everyone. He wants everyone to understand the example that it's important that you have to hear from the gurus, from the spiritual teachers. It, again, it's education, but it's an education which we did not get usually in the material world. The governments of the world, they don't give so much spiritual education. They may educate you to read and write and do different simple things, but they don't teach you the basic knowledge of spiritual life, self-realization. They won't teach us the difference between the living body and the dead body. It's very difficult to understand these things. But if you get the help of the spiritual teachers, then it becomes very easy. The spiritual teachers, the gurus, they can open our eyes with the torchlight of transcendental knowledge. And 
with the help of transcendental knowledge, we can detach ourselves from the material body. The material body is just simply the vehicle of the soul. Just as in here, here in this country, so many vehicles are there on the roads. Everyone has got a vehicle. <coughs> and the same way we have our body, our vehicle for the soul. And we're moving in this body. The vehicles, of course, of the world, they don't last forever. They run down, they get old, they get out of date, and you get a new vehicle. So similarly with the material body, this body also starts to grow old, breaks down, and at some point we have to give it up, and we will take another vehicle, we will go on. The journey continues, but we want to understand that journey there should be some destination some goal we want to go to achieve that's why people on the road they're driving they have some destination in mind where are they going maybe they're going out for the dinner maybe they're going to visit relatives maybe they're going to office or maybe they're going to mosque whatever they're going somewhere, they have some destination in mind. So similarly in yoga practice, we want to reach the destination. The destination is to reach the Super Soul, the Lord in the heart, the Super Soul. That we want to understand. This is important. To come to knowledge, to have knowledge that the Lord is there in our heart. And we can reach Him, we can know Him by controlling the mind, going beyond the mind, higher than the intelligence. Then we will come to understand the Super Soul. We are looking, trying to find enjoyment trying to find pleasure in the external world, in the material energy. We spend so much time nowadays, you can see people, mobile phones. How many hours a day you spend in the mobile phone? We are hoping we will get some pleasure, some enjoyment from this. <laughs> but actually the real pleasure is not in the external objects, the real pleasure is within us. Long time ago, in the days of Yarn, there was a great king called Bharat Maharaj. And Bharat Maharaj renounced the world. He renounced the world and went to the Himalayas. And when he was in the Himalayas, after renouncing wealth and kingdom and everything, somehow he allowed himself to become attached to an animal, to a deer. And the result was, he, he had to take his next birth as an animal. He became again a deer, because he became attached to the deer, he neglected his own meditation, his own spiritual practice, and it cost him one lifetime. He had to take a whole nother life in an animal body. And he had to live in the Himalayas, in the animal body, and then next life again took birth. And then he became, he was born in a Brahmana family. So then he was very careful not to get attached again because he had seen the danger. So the same way we are in the material world and there are many distractions, many things which we become absorbed in. We become absorbed in our mobile phone, 
in our computer, we become absorbed in our motor car. So many things are there to absorb the mind. But we want to turn the mind within to contemplate the Super Soul, the Lord in the heart. That's very important. So long as we're in the bodily consciousness of life, then we will feel the pain, we will feel the trouble of the material body. Just like these children, they feel so much pain and comfort and problems with the body because they're young children, so they feel disturbed constantly. And we also, we also feel the same troubles with our mind. It troubles us. We have to turn within to the super show to contemplate the Supreme within the heart of everyone. And we can do that by chanting the Maha Mantra. When you begin to chant the Maha Mantra, then you can awaken that consciousness that the Lord is in your heart. And you can feel how the Lord is pleased when you begin to chant the Holy Name. When we come to temple and we sing the glories of the Lord, the Lord in the heart is pleased with us. We feel pleasure coming to the temple. When we, when we take part in Sadhu Sangha, we will feel relief from the miseries of the material existence. It comes about naturally. Just like when you eat, you feel relief from hunger. You feel nourishment. You feel satisfaction. In the same way, when you practice Krishna Consciousness, chanting the Holy Name and hearing the scriptures and worshipping the Lord, you will naturally feel relief from material anxiety. You will feel spiritual pleasure. You will come to that stage of samadhi where you're no longer disturbed by all the problems of the material existence. You will be aloof from all the problems of the material body. It's all possible. If you read Srimad Bhagavatam, you can read in the 11th canto the Uddhava Gita. Lord Krishna instructed Uddhava. Here I'm reading from Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna instru instructing Arjuna. But in Srimad Bhagavatam, in the 11th canto, Lord Krishna is speaking to Uddhava and he's telling Uddhava about the problems of life, the miseries, the difficulties which are there with the material body and how we have to become detached from the material body. And Lord Krishna advises Uddhava that one should not be disturbed by others. Other people may spit on you, they may urinate on you, they may insult you in so many ways, but one who is in transcendental consciousness, he will not be disturbed. He will tolerate all of these difficulties. How? Because He's not in the bodily consciousness of life. The body is simply the vehicle. It's only the covering of the soul. One who has actually understood himself as a spiritual being, then he is prasanatma, Brahma Buddha Prasanatma. Lord Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita that one who has come to the platform of Brahman, that he is a joyful soul. He is not in the consciousness of the body. The nature of the soul, Satchit Anand. So he experiences transcendental pleasure. He's not disturbed by all the dualities of the material world. And Lord Krishna goes on to give an example. He tells about the Brahmana 
from Avanti Desh. The Srimad Bhagavatam describes how this one Brahmana, that previously he was a wealthy man, but he was very miserly. He never gave his wife any money, he never gave any money for his servants, he gave them always only the worst food to eat. He didn't like to spend any money, but it happened that this man eventually lost all of his money. He had used it in some business and somehow he had lost all of his money. And when he lost everything, then his family rejected him and the servants all left him because he's no money anymore, so nobody wants anything to do with him. So he was completely alone, so he thought what to do. He decided he would renounce the world. He decided he would become a sadhu. He, he put on the dress of a renounced monk. And he would go and beg from people. And he would go and beg from his different enemies. People in the past who were his enemies, he would go to them and beg from them. And they would spit on him and they would do terrible things to him. If he would wash cloth, they would steal the cloth from him. They left him with practically no cloth. He was suffering. They, get, they, they did everything they could to make him miserable, to give him trouble. But he tolerated all of it because he was fixed in the super soul. He had taken shelter of the Lord in the heart. And because he had taken shelter of the Lord in the heart, he was not disturbed by any of the miseries of the material existence. Srila Prabhupada tells us how we can take shelter of the Lord in the heart. He says, when we are suffering, we should think, I deserve to suffer much more, but I'm only suffering a little. I'm only suffering a little. <laughs> We're suffering, but it's it's only a little bit. There's months, so many other people suffering much more. We should think that Krishna has reduced my suffering. I'm only suffering a little bit. I should suffer much more. I'm such a rascal. I deserve to suffer much more. But Krishna has reduced my suffering. And when we're joyful, when we're happy, we're, we should think, I do not deserve this, but Krishna is trying to encourage me. In other words, we see everything as the arrangement of the Supreme Lord. This is taking shelter of the Super Soul in happiness and in distress seeing it all as the arrangement of the Supreme Lord and not being disturbed by these different situations. This is samadhi, fixed mind. The mind should be fixed on Lord Krishna. Then we can transcend all of the miseries of material existence. All right? So we want to know, are there any questions? Any comments? Anyone? Thank you, Maharaj, for the nice touch. Maharaj, I will say that uh, above the senses is mind, and then higher than the mind is the intelligence. But uh, many times he was just taken in this path of this bhakti, and we know by intelligence this is not, uh, this is all. But still, sometimes mind is neglecting the dictation of the intelligence uh, to do whatever senses are telling to do. So, uh, so in this case, how to deal with such cases? Yes, intelligence wise, you know this is not good. Thing. But still, mind neglect the dictation of. Yes. Did you hear the question? No. Yes. 
So the Prabhu is saying sometimes we have intelligence and we know something is not right, we know we shouldn't do something, but still sometimes the senses do it. The mind doesn't listen to the intelligence. Yes, this can happen. But what do we have to do? We have to conquer the mind, right? You have to train the mind. How do you train the mind? Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati said, in the morning, beat it with shoes. And at night, take a stick and beat it. Training the mind is like training a wild animal. How do you train a wild animal? You capture it, you put it in the cage, and then you starve it. You don't give it any food, and then you beat it, and then you feed it. <laughs> so in this way, the wild animal knows, oh, this person's very powerful. He put me in this cage, he starved me, he beat me, now he's feeding me. I better do what he said. <laughs> so this is how we can conquer the mind, train the mind, like the wild animal. How do you beat the mind? You make it do what it doesn't want to do. Right? The mind says, oh, today's, today's holiday, let's just sleep today. Why should I get up? The mind said, oh, don't chant Hare Krishna, you chanted yesterday, why you chant today again? Oh no, oh no, we're not going to go to temple again, oh no, we went there last week, why we should go this week? The mind will always say these things, we have to learn to beat the mind. You make the mind do what it doesn't want to do. And what your intelligence tells you, you should be doing. We should be doing. We should be chanting, we should go to temple, we should read, we should chant, we should do it. The mind said, oh no, oh you've done it enough, you don't need to do so much. The mind will make so many excuses to take us away from Krishna. So you beat the mind, you make it do it. And you starve the mind, you don't give in to the desires of the mind. The mind said, oh let's go to cinema, let's go to watch Bollywood movie tonight, or let's uh, go and eat in the restaurant tonight, go to park, and the mind will say so many, you starve the mind, you don't give in to all these desires of the mind. You starve the mind, you beat the mind, then you feed the mind. What do you feed it? Well, Krishna Susada, yeah. <laughs> Give it the holy name, chanting, with so many devotional activities. You engage it in Krishna's service. Engage it in reading, studying courses like we have Bhakti Shastri, Bhakti Vaibha, so many things you can do to keep the mind busy, to keep us engaged in Krishna's service. We say, Krishna is like the sun and Maya is like darkness. Where there is Krishna, there will be no Maya. So when we are fully engaged in Krishna's service, then there is no time for Maya. So it's important for us how to deal with the mind. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati was very strict on these things. Beat the mind. First thing in the morning, the mind in the morning doesn't want to get up, it doesn't want to chant. You have to beat it, you have to make it do what it doesn't want to do. Intelligence is there to tell us, to remind us what we have to do, what is important for us, what is really going to help us. 
So that intelligence, we say intelligence is like the driver, mind is like the reins, the senses are the horses. So the horses are controlled by the mind, but the mind is controlled, must be controlled by good intelligence. But intelligence can also be polluted. Lust can also be found not only in the senses, not only in the mind, but also in the intelligence. So we have to be very careful that our intelligence does not become polluted. And to help us to keep pure intelligence, that's why we read Shastra, that's why we associate with sadhus and hear from spiritual teachers. Uh, so much is there to you know, uh, you know, learn from these nice uh, scriptures uh, given by Oshana Prabhupada. Um, but uh, but when we get older, it's very difficult to grasp, also to implement, to follow. It's very difficult actually. You have to ask your right now, The prescription is given by you now, it's really good. But still, we have to struggle and we need to, ch you know, it's a challenge for us. So to bring this wonderful knowledge uh, to the you know the children's eyes nice, uh, at the younger age, it's a really beautiful thing to do. And uh, the best way to do also is to bring this knowledge also to the children going to school. So, but um, how we can bring this uh, or make it happen in the schools? Uh, any uh, pure practical uh, way of approach from Maharaj? How we can bring this knowledge to the school going children? I know when they are at the school, and not only you know one place, uh, across you know different parts of the world, because we have children everywhere, and they are going to school, they are going to college, and these wonderful teachings of Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavad how we can impart this knowledge to the school going children and college college going children. Yes, Prabhu is saying that when we're younger, it's easier to learn, and Prahlad Maharaj also said. Kumar Acharya Pratno Dharmam Bhagavatam From the beginning of life should learn this knowledge of Bhagavad Dharma, the spiritual knowledge. If you get that good education in the beginning, then it's much easier. Later on, it's more trouble, difficult. Actually, any point you can do it, but certainly education is easier in the beginning of life, right? You go to school, we send the children to school, young children. As they get older, it's more difficult to learn. So how can we arrange for the children to get this education? Because you're in a foreign country, you're in this country, and this is not the national culture. So you have to do it in your own home. You can have homeschooling. Number of people, they keep their children at home and educate them at home. The mother teaches them. The mother herself can learn and teach the children at the same time. You train the children. You read with them and you get them to study and learn slogans, improve their memory. We have many examples like this, children whose parents the homeschooling. They didn't change, they didn't send the children into the the schools. They kept them at home and they educated them at home. And they educated them with Prabhupada's books. Everything is there. And Prabhupada and they go to school, they learn so many useless things. Things which are of no value for them actually. We know ourselves when we went to school we learned so many things, useless information. You waste your time so much. But if you read Prabhupada's books, you learn from the Shastra, you learn, you get real spiritual knowledge. So that's one way to do it. The other way is you send them to Gurukula, put them in the Gurukula. Children can go to Gurukula. We have summer camps also. Some of our temples like Pune and like that, they have the summer camp 
they have the children come there for the summer and they get training in the summer, very good for them. Although you can think like that. Uh, one family, they told me they went to Europe for their holiday and they went to Hungary. And in Hungary, they went to see Krishna Valley. There's one farm community there. Devotees have made one Krishna Valley. So they went to see the place there. You know, liked it very much. And they met with the the spiritual teacher there, was Shivaram Swami. His holiness Sh Shivaram Swami. So that they were there. And Achiva Ramswami met the family and he saw that he said to the man, he said, you know, you've got two sons. Why you, why you don't give one son to me? <laughs> and, and the one son was willing, he was quite interested. So he, he, he said, I'll come and spend, come and get some training. At least get training there. Spend three years there, get some training. Living in the ashram with the devotees, practicing spiritual life, waking up in the morning, go to the temple, hearing Bhagavatam, being with the devotees all day. So he, he's finished already school, now he's there in Hungary. And he's spent, he'll be there for three years, after three years then he can decide if he wants to go on to university or come back and do his material education. But he's going to get three years training in the action. So that's one way you can do it. Yeah, a very wonderful uh, experience, Maharaj. Thank you so much. That's uh, quite a practical uh, working position is possible, uh, provided the parents willing to um, put this uh, into practice. Yes, parents, if they're not too much attached, <laughs> yeah. they're willing to, okay, give my son freedom, let him go, give him a chance, try to cultivate the spiritual path. All right, any other questions? Thank you very much. Yeah? No? Yeah. All right, so we'll distribute the sadhana. Yeah. Hare Krishna, Puriya Mother, Uti Please all uh, take the sadhana from all the time. Thank you.